Hi YouTubers, today I want to talk to you about spiritualism and it's a bit of a rant because spiritualism pisses me off. Now it's a sweary video so if you don't like swearing, okay, have you gone? Good. Now spiritualists, spiritualism, it's so fucking annoying, it really really pisses me off. And why does it piss me off? Because people seem to assume that spiritualism, unlike a god, unlike um, a, a religion, spiritualism doesn't need an explanation. It doesn't need an explanation because it's spiritualism. It's what? You know, people believing in their inner selves, their spiritual enlightenment, their inner god, all this absolute bullshit. And there are several different types of spiritualists. They use it in nearly every religion. There is somebody who calls himself a guru, for instance, who, who would say, uh, perhaps in, in the Hindu religion, but you also find these sort of Buddhist gurus as well, and they're all calling, calling themselves spiritualists. And they have absolutely no evidence in the same way that every other religion doesn't. But what they like to do is, and I think it's because mainly that they don't follow a major religion, but they still want to be quite important. Um, so they have this way of making themselves some sort of guru. So what am I actually having a go at? Well, have a look at this guy, for instance. There's a small clip and have a quick look at this. Those of you listeners who have heard David's other recordings know that at one time he stated that spirituality cannot be measured in the world of science because spirituality calibrates higher than science and you can't argue context, that is spirituality, with content, that is science. More recently, it seems that there is a greater merging of science and spirituality as perceptions within the scientific world appear to be expanding to be more open to the existence of some forces that are beyond scientific explanation. Is this true? So you cannot prove love. You cannot prove love because it's a nonlinear ineffable. To be in love or to love something, you cannot prove that one way or another scientifically. A person will give up everything in this world and walk all across the planet barefoot out of love, out of love. And you can't even prove that love by science. <laughs> so love is of a different dimension, a different quality. You can't get the temperature of music. Music doesn't have a temperature. Temperature is one domain and music is another. OK, that's one type of spiritualist. They're really annoying, these particular types. These ones uh, like to blind you with science. The trans-digressional um, aspects of the transformations of um, the possible vernacular and, and um, that's the sort of language they speak in. They talk in a language that they don't want you to understand. They use long words, high important words, because they know it's bullshit. Otherwise they'd be able to explain it all. They say things like love cannot, cannot be uh, measured, so how therefore can you measure uh, spirituality? Well, no, but OK, love can be measured in many ways. Um, you could, for instance, um, if you want to know if somebody loved you or not, you say to yourself, mm, well, are they buying you, um, say, flowers? Uh, are they buying you flowers? Uh, if you're a lady, of course. If you're a man, well, maybe flowers. Um, but are they buying you anything, for starters? Uh, do they pay you a lot of attention, making meals, uh, taking you out to dinner? Um, do they say the right things? Do they, they try hard to impress you? Does this continue over a long period of time? All these things are little clues to somebody's love. And even though they're not definite positives, they are at least some way of measuring. Whereas with, say, a uh, deity or spiritual aspect, they then say, well, you can't measure that either. True that within yourself, you personally can feel that you have your own type of spirituality. Um, or I believe and I feel that there's a loving God looking after me. That is possible. Um, 
but that really is not a way of measuring somebody else's um, type of love. You can do the, say the same thing about love, uh, love itself. You know if you love someone and you know it exists. Um, unless you've never loved anyone or anything in your entire life, in which case I feel sorry for you, but most of us have, in fact, loved at some point or other. And you know what it feels like. It may be not be, uh, it may, may be unrequited love. Somebody probably doesn't love you back, but that doesn't matter. You still know what love feels like. And there are ways of, as I say, measuring someone's love back for you in generally the way they act. But can you do that really with um, a deity, anything that's spiritual? No, because they don't react back with you. You might have that love, but no reaction back. And for that reason, these sort of people piss me off um, because they try to make something out of nothing, which is exactly what spirituality is, spiritualism. Um, and these wacky guru tits. But that's just one type of spiritualist. Let's, let's have a look at another one. I'm often asked what I believe. I want to take the time to express my beliefs so that I can be heard and understood, but it's not always that easy. Because what I believe does not revolve around a story. It can't be defined by a specific historical event. It has never been completely explained by any one person. There is no ultimate authority on the subject but me. I believe in spiritual living. Above all else, it is a philosophy that urges me to focus on how to think, not what to think. It invites me to practice this philosophy and apply it to my life right now. It is not placed in the history of the world, though it draws from many great teachers of the past. It does not predict my future, though it assures me success by living with principles. Now these sort of spiritualists, you meet them in the street, um, they are usually part of a religion, already a part of a religion. They just don't like to put themselves in a particular bracket. Let's say like a, a Northern Baptist or Southern Baptist don't want to be associated with one or the other. They don't want to be called Catholic or they're just Christian perhaps. And they don't want to be put into a bracket of religion. They will then call themselves spiritual but they still really follow the same sort of God. They might not even, they say, well, we don't really believe in the stories of the Bible. They're not really believable, but we believe in something and it's gotta be Christian because that's why I was brought up. Now, that's the other type of tits. But the thing is, these people usually unaggressive, not really harmful. Um, of course, they do start cults, some of them, and can be harmful. Let's put it into a perspective and it, it's, a perspective that um, I've borrowed it from other analogies in the past that I, I've read and very good analogies. But as a friend of mine, for instance, who he obviously brought up Christian, but he had a nervous breakdown. He had a lot of pressures at work, a lot of pressures at home. He had a nervous breakdown. I went to visit him in the local mental hospital or asylum, whatever you want to call it. And it was a rather interesting experience. I was I, I, I walked around the asylum um, dragging a Chinese woman clutching to my leg and nobody seemed to stop her and you know I didn't like to say do you mind not doing that but uh, anyway I got to his, his, his area where he was sort of like rocking on his bed and um, now this guy had been one of a group of friends that we went out every week and he was one of the biggest laughs you could come across he would be the quickest with the jokes. He was, he was very good. And he was reduced really to um, quivering wreck of, of sorts. But with his breakdown came his spirituality, his religion. No mention of it in the, before that, but all of a sudden he'd been talking to the local preacher or the, the hospital priest or whatever. And he got it into his head that his, um, his son, uh, was the, in fact, a reincarnation of Jesus. I, I, I kid you not. Uh, he was totally serious as well. He didn't recover fully ever from his problems. He recovered a bit. 
Um, even to this day, he is on medication, I believe, for the rest of his life. It, it, but I've spoken to him again since. Um, I won't say he's a close friend anymore because he's so difficult to me. He actually thought I was, uh, he was paranoid as well. He had paranoid tendencies and he thought we all wanted to kill him. So um, we had better things to do, to be honest, than, than go around killing him. But he believed it and you can believe many things, um, generally feeling that you believe these things. Okay, you could say he was under he, he, mental conditions. Um, he had a, a mental disorder. But many people must have disorders that probably won't shine out as much as others. You wouldn't put them away for it. You wouldn't say that uh, all priests, well, perhaps you would, but priests should be locked up. Um, they generally have a spirituality about them and we tend to accept it, but why do we accept it? Just to go back slightly to this guy, um, later he started, um, I spoke to him and his parents had died, but his father still spoke to him through a light bulb. I kid you not. He said, my father speaks to me still through the light bulb at home. And he tells me what to do. And I was like, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, and of course we can, I knew it wasn't real. He believed it was. He said, I know it sounds stupid, but that's, I believe it because it happens to me. So, okay, I know these things do happen. But let's take the light bulb analogy. If, say, we all got our commandments from a light bulb, one particular light bulb, if the light bulb said to you, I want you to go out and um, I want you to go out um, on every Friday night, for instance, and I want you to give out food to those on the streets um, who are in poverty, who, who are sleeping rough, give them warmth, soup kitchens, something like that. And you'd say, when you find out this person's doing this and why, you'd say, well, they're not doing any harm, are they? They're not really doing any harm. I know that, you know, he talks to a light bulb, but the light bulb tells them nice things. And for that reason, we accept that the light bulb is speaking to him or her or whoever. But let's put it in another way. This light bulb speaks to someone else. And to someone else, it says, I don't like black people. I want you to go out and kill every black person on the 9.30 bus to town. And this person will go, mm, yeah, okay. But they are then going out and doing what the light bulb is told. And we all look at it and go, it's a complete lunatic. He's talking to fucking light bulbs. Lock him away. Lock him away. Now the point is, the point is, should we not always look at the fact they're talking to light bulbs? And this light bulb obviously is my analogy for God. And it's not just do they do good, do they do bad, but they're talking to fucking light bulbs. I hope you get where I'm coming from. And we, with spirituality and all this bloody crap, it's just the same. They're still talking to light bulbs. And I don't know where I'm going with this. I don't really. Um, let me have a think and review. I think the worst thing really about um, these spiritualists is, they, apart from the fact they have enough fuck that they know what they're talking about, but they pretend they do. They tell you all sorts of bullshit, which means absolutely nothing, and they become, um, well, almost arrogant. Um, I don't like saying that because atheists are often called arrogant, mainly because they're right, but when it comes to spiritualists, their arrogance is unbelievable. They cannot explain anything. They have no way of proving anything. And yet the arrogance of the bastards is unbelievable. Ah, oh, well, of course, you're not going to understand because you're not spiritual. Fuck off. You know, if you can't fucking explain it, if you can't say anything um, about it, except, well, you have to just experience it for yourself. Well, fuck you. You know, it's ridiculous. You're talking 
bollocks. And I've met these people and they, you know, just want to punch them on the nose. I don't because I'm a peaceful person, okay? But I want to. In fact, a Walty Mitty character somewhere inside me is machine gunning them to the bloody wall. I have them lined up. Ah, <laughs> oh, but that's just Walter Mitty. <sighs> but I wouldn't do it, obviously, because um, even though I'm not spiritual, I have inner peace. Uh, anyway. Oh, another thing, they always think they're at fucking one with everything. Well, everything isn't fucking one with you, so fuck off. There must be one thing about spiritualists, spiritual, spiritual people, spiritualists I like, and that's is they're usually peaceful. They are usually peaceful, I'll give them that. Uh, if they didn't talk bullshit, I wouldn't mind them for that point of view. They're usually people that, uh, but, 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 hang on, then if you try and put comments on most of the videos, they just blank you because they don't want people telling them they're wrong oh it's all one video uh, recently i'll see if i can find it if not um you just have to take my word for it uh, i actually watched it today i must be in the history i'll have a look back and there's somebody on there and they say uh, it's writing to this guy who's just written a book surprisingly and it says um since i've become spiritual i've noticed that i now have psychic powers doesn't actually say what psychic powers and and he goes well yes i found this is it is common thing that you will get with with becoming spiritual psychic powers doesn't elaborate you know are they all the fucking x-men well no no we don't have the x-men in the bloody mitts do we it's a story um what sort of psychic powers then I don't know, well if people have all these fucking psychic powers, then surely they should be going along like the X-Men and doing some good about it. They could all club together, the spiritualist bloody psychics, and they could all get together and we all go, blimey, you're all right. Everything you've done, everything you say is right. And that is amazing. But no, no, I'm sorry to say, they're not out there. So, spiritualist wankers, if you want to be psychic, well, I suggest you start proving it to us all. OK, um, otherwise, I'm not going to believe you. I'm going to think you're idiots. God, I'm enjoying this rant. Did I say God? Well, OK. Darn, I'm, I'm really enjoying this rant. I could have said Gord, Gord, Gord. In fact, do you not do that a lot? Um, as an atheist uh, and other atheists out there who must probably watch this, do you not find yourself going, Jesus Christ of God, or, you know, all the time, you know, maybe we find that's the same in Islam. Um, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, you know, God is bloody great, isn't he? Um, I wonder if they're doing the same thing, you know, it's not God is great, it's just, oh, fuck off, I'm fucking this, I'm fucking that is what they're really saying, but they're doing it nicely, obviously not like I just did. They're just going, Allah Akbar, or something similar. I don't know. This is the Mohammed thing they do as well. Uh, anyway, bye. Actually, talking of psychic experiences, I had a friend who lived in New York, and she went out there to live, and I said to her, Stay away from tall buildings, won't you? Stay away from tall buildings in New York. She goes, why, why? I said, because one of them's gonna blow up big time. Believe me, it's gonna be big. And um, so she went over there, and a week later, um, the, uh, the trade, trade tower was, in fact, bombed. And you might think, bloody hell, in fact, she rang me, she said, God, you warned me, didn't you? You warned me about that. You said, it. I don't know, I didn't know it, bloody God. I just said it as a bloody, you know, off chance, I thought, big buildings, one of them's going to get bombed sooner or later. It's going to happen. Um, okay, and after that I went, yeah, I did, I had it in a dream. Did I? Fuck. At the time, though, of course, I wasn't being um, myself, you know. I, I wasn't being honest, let's put it that way. Um, but looking back, and again, thinking about it, uh, it was fairly obvious that sooner or later a, a building was going to blow up in New York. Now, I have to point out this wasn't the main 9-11, it was the very first ever, when they put a car bomb in the, in, in the first time that happened. Uh, it was its first bombing, as it were, not the second one. But, hey, uh, they still think I'm some sort of psychic for, or sort of dreaming it or something. But, no, I just guessed. 
um, you know, I can I can make predictions, same as a lot of people. I, I predict um, sometime during this year, Pat Robertson will make a complete arse of himself. Um, it's possible. Well, I've given up smoking, that's the other thing. I'm really, really got uptight, okay? So if I seem more uptight than normal, it's because I need a, f I'm going to say fag, but in America they think that's gay boys. Um, I need a fag, which in Britain means a cigarette. But uh, I'm not going to have one. I am not going to have one. I, I, I'm just going to eat more. <sighs> Peace.